Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We are <clears throat> getting ready for 11-11. <clears throat> it is Tuesday. The start of another part of our journey. So glad you're here. If you uh, hear huffing and puffing this morning, we've got uh, the Associate Minister of Hospitality over here who uh, seems pretty transfixed with the world. So, uh, you come say hi, Poco. Poco, come here. There he is. Hello, puppy. Hello, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Donna. How are you this morning? Terrific to see you. Vicki, hello, hello. I hope you are enjoying the beauty of this day. That's great. Uh, you have, I, from all the pictures I have seen, you have a magical yard. I am so, uh, uh, so I'm glad you're out there uh, enjoying the beauty of it. Good morning, Robin. Uh, that, uh, so good to see you. So glad you're here. Um, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. We've got some, some more folks coming in. Great to see people gathering. So glad you are with us this morning. There is a goodness to it that we're uh, a part of this journey together. It's good stuff. We had our, on Sunday, we had our, our uh, pilgrimage to Plymouth, which was just a joy. We had, I think, 26 people all told, and it was uh, so good to gather on so many levels. Not to, to just connect with our pilgrim ancestors, but to, uh, and, and go on that journey, but also to fellowship with each other. Uh, and to have some to to be to just to be with each other, uh, to watch some kids play with baby goats. You know, do you realize how healing it is to watch children play with baby goats? It is fantastic. Uh, it's no donkey, mind you, Robin. No baby donkey. No no miniature donkey. But it is uh, it is a profoundly healing on so many levels. So. Hi, Linda. You're, oh, Linda's here with her your mom and dad. Ah, oh, that's so great. I am so glad to that you are with us. I've heard so much about you, and you have raised an outstanding daughter. She's terrific. Uh, so you, uh, I hope you are very proud of her. Is uh, she is wonderful. Uh, good morning, Priscilla. Hope you are glad you're here. Uh, very nice. Oh, good. You're going to see your mom today. That's terrific. Give her my very best. I hope, uh, hope she is well. Morning, Fanny Faye Davis in the house. Good morning, everybody. It is the 17th day of November. The 17th day of November is halfway over. We have friends, wait, friends, we got six weeks left this year. I know we should rejoice in that, but a lot can happen in six weeks. But. We are the 17th day of November at 11.11, and I am so glad you're with us today that we might be a part of uh, this journey, might be a part of each other's lives, we might be a part of encouraging one another, we might continue to just join together in this space and this time uh, and this being, uh, that uh, we uh, might be the community of faith together. You know, this is the the... 400th anniversary of the of the uh, pilgrims landing in the new world and and we've been talking a lot about that and but the the formation of the pilgrims hey good morning John Wells hey Gary good morning great to see you good morning Irene glad you're here the, but but the the pilgrim path this this uh, little group that gathered in Scrooby England that that uh, began to take their journey seriously in a new and different way that that changed the world. Uh, came off of one uh, simple piece of scripture that was this basis, which is, it's from the 18th chapter of, of Matthew. And I want to talk about it today because 
I think it has actually something to offer us uh, in how we're negotiating our world and how we're negotiating each other and what we're bringing into this journey and how we're moving through it. So, and it's simply this. It is, this is, is, this is uh, Matthew 18, 18 to 20. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This scripture became the foundation of the understanding of the congregational way of being church. And what I would say is really the, what you find is the Protestant way of being church, quite honestly. Uh, as, uh, you know, I, I'll make that contention and I'll, I'll fight with anybody about it. So you uh, will, that, that, we're, that we're in this place on this pilgrimage and that wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among you. And I think the powerful thing of this is, and the way it's been understood, and I want to offer you maybe a little different understanding than what you might have heard over in the, over in the journeying. Sherry, good morning. Jamie, good morning. Jamie, you are never late, honey. You, are, you, you arrive exactly when you mean to. You are, you're, uh, you're too much of a rock star for that. We are, that we come to this place in this moment when we're, gathered together in the name of Jesus for, and Jesus is there with us in it. Now, this whole thing about in the name of, and I, I would say that's what I want to talk about today. That's what, that's, that's what I want to get to, because I think we've been, we've been told, we've been told often this is, that it's an authority thing, you know, that, that we understand it as authority, that, that when Peter is out, casting out demons in in the name of Jesus uh, and that when exorc exorcists even today you know go on the whole journey of casting out demons now whatever you think about casting out demons we don't need to get into that right now but just to know that it's all done out of the authority of Jesus to in the name of Jesus you you hear that and you you know that now that's great that's great and I'm not necessarily arguing with that but I think that actually it has not a different meaning, but an also meaning that this is the, I mean, this is the brilliance of scripture. This is the brilliance of faith that it, that it, it, it doesn't just mean the one thing that is, that it is, you know, um, in the words of Shrek, ogres are like onions and scripture are, is like onions. There's this way in which where there's the descending and deeper and deeper meanings. And we can say it's in the authority of Jesus, just like, you know, just like we we talk about, you know, for if a police officer were to come in here and drag me off, they would do, be doing it under the authority of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, that that that, that we're we're granted authority. You know, you're granted authority, you know, you're granted a authority to drive your car because you have a little license from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. You, we're, we're given all these authority, we're, we're handed out authorities by by the state. And, and it's this idea of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Jesus being authority and that when we do something in their name, we do it just like that police officer would be acting in, in, in the name of the Commonwealth and to drag me off. Now, and I'm not arguing with any of that. However, I think, I think there's actually a better way to understand it because, because I don't think it's really at the end of the day about the authority of things. I don't think our lives were, are constantly punctuated by, by the question of who's in charge here. You know, do we, we don't enter into our family dinner table by, by a declaration of, of, well, I'm in charge. You know, kind of the Alexander Haig's kind of moments of our being, if anybody remembers any of that. I'm dating myself. Uh, that we come to this place of, of, of understanding authority. But in the ancient world, there was another way to understand doing something in somebody's name. Because... You see all the different people, all the different uh, uh, prophets of the day, and Jesus was one of many prophets, one of many rabbis that was teaching, is that they would teach in their way, and that so that that you would you would be a part of of a particular teaching, and that particular teaching would have a quality to it. Now stay with me here because I think this is where it gets good. That there's a quality, there's a quality in Jesus's name. 
There's a quality when we gather together in a particular way, with a particular grace, with a particular love, with a particular desire for truth and love. There's a, there's a particular quality that comes together. And that when we come together in that quality, that's when Jesus is present. That's when we're truly the church in this world. And so we come to worship on Sunday uh, so that we might be vivified and, and get new life. But we also come together and we gather together in, uh, in Jesus' name. Not so that we might say we're the Billy Boss man of the world and we're the best thing going. But that we might be able to say we bring a particular way of caring for each other, of moving through this world with each other of holding on to each other when we're in crisis, of, of lifting one another up. I've seen all of you, people who you don't even know, people who don't even know each other. The only common linchpin is that you found your way here over these last, over these last months. And yet I've seen that quality. I have seen the face of Jesus. I have seen you in Jesus' name gather in this place when you've cared for each other, when you've reached out, when you've chatted, when you've had a, when you've had a moment with each other. You see, and I believe this, that church can break out anywhere, and church does break out anywhere. You know, if you go to the grocery store and you're, you're care, you know, you're, you hold the door for somebody and that, that has their arms full, there's this way in which you, there's this meeting of, of the two of you, and that it, that happens, and that in that, Jesus can be present. That there's this way in which we move through this world and that when we come together and in, in simple desire to do, a, to do a good job in a right way, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if you're pounding nails on a roof and that you, you want to make sure that those shingles are lined up right and correctly, not because you're worried about uh, you know, having to come back or you don't want to warranty the roof or you don't want to be a, a part of this, but because you want the people who inhabit that home to be dry and safe and warm. That you want to that you want to know that your name as it goes into the world as a roofer is something that is that is known as something of quality and of height, and that when you when when a team of people gather together to do that, friends, that's church, friends, that's that's moving to the world in Jesus' name. See when when we found this church, you know, and when and we saw this on on Sunday when we went to 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 Plymouth that that every piece and every part of life becomes sacred washing the dishes so that your family might know cleanliness and joy and goodness and the people that you love you might be able to express love for caring for people uh, that that you don't know and that you have never known those anonymous donations are all of these ways that when we gather in them and when we gather in them with other people they become this qualitative reality. And that quality, that quality, that's gathering in Jesus' name. It's not, a, it's not about who's in charge. We know who's in charge. We're, we're told quite clearly who's in charge. God is on the throne. Christ is at his right hand. The Spirit roams the earth. And yet you and I in this hour and this place have the ability to have that God and that Jesus right in our presence when we're creating the kingdom of God right here in a grocery or aisle supermarket, in a, in a, in a phone call made to somebody that you care about, in a, in, a, in a coming together of love and a desire to do that which is good and right right and true into the world. Friends, that's Jesus' name. That's Jesus' name. You can, we're, 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 we're in a, we're in a, in the midst of this whole conflagration about who's going to be in charge and what's in charge and, and who, who really, who, uh, what what truths and what what things are 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 higher or lower on the pecking order of how we understand things all of that friends is a sideshow to the real kingdom and the real presence because the presence is not about declaring things in Jesus name so that you can be right uh, I think that's probably a trick of some clergy people which you know because it's not a wrong statement it's just a very limited one 
But what it really is, or, or what it is at even a deeper level, it's even deeper than what I'm articulating right now, is that you and I, when we care for each other, when we seek to do good in the world, when we, when we put our hands to things in, a, in, a, in a, as pure a way as we can muster. No, none of us are perfect. We're all going to have some agendas going on, whatever. None of, us, none of us master that. But when we come together in that just two or three of us and we bind together goodness and we bind together love and we bind together uh, uh, wisdom and we let loose the spirit of God on the world where two or three are gathered, there's Jesus. There is the King of heaven. There is Christ incarnate right in our midst. If you if you've been following my if you've been following uh, anything on my Facebook page or anything like that, you know that I am a huge Vendee Globe fan. Uh, that it is uh, that Vendee Globe is I think the greatest sailboat race in the world. If you don't know it, uh, look it up, follow it. It's fantastic. It is a one guy uh, sailing around the world uh, um, uh, alone in a 60 foot boat that's designed to go as fast as it can go around the, around the planet. And there's 33 of them out there contending for the championship. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. Uh, it is the, in many ways, the, the single most sport that I'm most, uh, most passionate about it happens once every four years. So I can't get that fired up about it. it that's helpful too. But it is this, it, it brought me as, as, as we've been journeying with it, uh, to this prayer of uh, Basil of Caesarea. Basil lived in uh, 1700 years ago. Uh, he was he's considered Basil the Great. He is a, he's a great theologian, one of the, one of the beginners of the, of the church as we know it. And he had this prayer that he prayed and I want to offer it to you. I'll put it in the comments when, so that you can maybe pray it through the course of your day about what it is to bring forward Jesus' name in this world, not as, not as decla declaration as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yeah, we got that one. But the declaration of the quality of the life that brings goodness and joy and being into our midst and into our being and into our very selves when we gather with a few people to bring it forward. And so his prayer is this, and I, I, pray, I pray it for you today. Steer the ship of my life, good Lord, to your quiet harbor, where I can be safe from the storms of sin and conflict. Show me the course I could take. Renew in me the gift of discernment so that I can always see the right direction in which I should go. And give me the strength and the courage to choose the right course, even when the sea is rough and the waves are high, knowing that through enduring hardship, in your name, I shall find comfort and peace. May you find comfort and peace in the name of Christ today. Not that it is something at the, not because not a, only is, is Christ king, but that Christ is present when we love one another, when we hold one another dear, when we, we two or three come together with, with to, to, to wish the very best of the world and to, to especially work towards the very best of the world, those places, those are the places that Jesus shows up. So you may, and that you, in the midst of all of that traveling and all of that working and all of that sailing, may know the comfort and peace in Jesus' name. All right, friends, that's my hope for you today. I hope you are, uh, you will uh, have a great day and we will see you tomorrow. Uh, it, uh, peace and grace, friends.